Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves, featuring conversations with special guests on topics related, but not limited to burnout, mindset, fulfillment, transitions, wellness, and so much more. I am your host, Jessica Locke, Astrala Yoga Guide and Holistic Wellness Coach. And this podcast is not about telling you what to do. I believe we all have the answers we need within. This podcast is here to inspire you, help you find clarity, and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. And of course, we'll be sharing tools and strategies from our guests to embrace your inner wisdom and live unleashed. Ready to dive in? Hello, my friends. It's been a minute, a few months since my last episode, and I just found myself wanting to take some time off, incubating in a bubble. That's how I explain it best. It's been a lot of, I guess, space to be, to digest everything that I've been doing and trying to do and It was much needed. Sometimes we get so caught up in wanting to pursue our dreams, in wanting to do all the things that help us grow and expand that we forget about ourselves. We forget to include ourselves in the equation. How are you as you're, you know, making all these things happen? How are you as you're taking your kids to school, working full time, taking care of the household, whatever is on your plate. How often do you check in with how you're doing? And I found myself just simply needing space. I love this podcast and I love everything that I do, but sometimes it can be too much if I don't check in with myself. It could lead me to a spiral of never-ending doing because there's always something to do. Either I find it, ways to improve or grow things, but it doesn't mean everything has to be done by me or at that moment. So if you've seen on social media, I've shared a little bit about my incubation bubble. I've been diving into the world of human design, which I'll make an episode about later on. It's essentially about learning how your energies work because we're all so unique and we don't function the same way. And learning about that has helped me put that into practice as well. All those insights about what it means to be honoring my energies. But... (laughs) Today's episode is not about that. That would be for a future episode. I really wanted to share this very, very first expansion session. And an expansion session are essentially coaching sessions where I help somebody through their resistance and guide them back to themselves, to their inner wisdom. Essentially, that's what I do, either through the lens of human design, coaching, even yoga. They're all different gateways that lead us back to ourselves. Even this podcast, it's meant to share each other's experiences and maybe recognize some breadcrumbs that can lead you back to yourself. You see, sometimes we learn best when we see ourselves reflected in the other. So much of our struggles feel so isolating, yet when you start talking to people, you might notice that we all feel those feelings in different degrees or layers, and it doesn't have to be the thing that divides us when in fact it can unite us. In today's episode with Janelle, we talked about fears, and if you've been around for a while, even on my newsletters and social media, you know I I talk about fears a lot because I find them fascinating. From recognizing what they are to identifying if it's really a fear that's coming from within versus one that you're amplifying from someone else. And yeah, we totally amplify or take in the fears from the people around us. 
learning to differentiate this oof, will make such a huge difference in your life. Because there is a difference. And you'll notice in this episode, the moment that Janelle makes a breakthrough. Seriously, I am beyond amazed to be able to witness this. And on the topic of fear, you know, they offer us so much insight. Fear is not to be fear because fear is like a signpost of what's going on underneath. There's so much wisdom in disguise, what's holding us back. We could try to logic them away, but sometimes it's not about really approaching them directly. It's about going around them. Because you can't get rid of fear by bulldozing your way through. That doesn't work. You can't get rid of it. Fear is a survival part of us that's as simple as it gets. But how can we hold space and listen and really listen to what it's trying to tell us to see beneath the surface? Because everything's connected and intertwined with each other. This episode is for you if you're sensing some doubt into a new venture you're starting or you're in the middle of a life transition or trying to gain clarity or simply because you want to understand yourself better and learn how to hold space for your fears. We talk about what's holding Janelle back, how she knows exactly what she wants, how she wants to grow her business, and she even has, you know, the connecting dots in front of her. But why can't she take those steps? We connect to her body wisdom and how you can do it too. And there is so much beautiful gems here. Come tag along for the ride. Okay, so tell me what's on the top of your mind right now? Sabotaging myself. Mm -hmm. Not, um, Not trusting that I truly have what it takes for the the goals and dreams that I have. Mm -hmm. And in what ways do you notice that coming up? Um, In pursuing, going further into business and going, and then even um, keeping myself guarded in relationship. Mm -hmm. So those would be the two main ones. How would you define how you're sabotaging yourself? Mm. Letting insecurity win. Mm -hmm. Like almost, it almost comes up like um, you have so much going on in your life. Who, Who do you think you are to think you can take up this space? Mm -hmm. sorry I'm just writing this down because it's coming to me too right yeah 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 that's great So taking up space, is it both in your relationship and in your business? No, it's funny. I'm finding myself almost taking up so much space in the relationship to guard myself, right? I fill it up. And then in real, in business-wise, like I'm even a hard, having a hard time creating the lead magnet or sticking to a book outline or like I'm kind of all over the place. It's like opposite. That's so fascinating. Yeah. I think I've learned, so I think what's happening relationally wise is that I've learned so much from the past that now the pendulum has so long a little bit too far and before I used to be like really passive never allowed myself to have a voice my thoughts feelings and opinions always get to the side and then now I'm catching myself being like like I better be respected and 
but too, but not soft, not loving, right? I don't want to, that's, that's not who I want to be, right? And I'm usually not, but if something gets triggered, that's what comes out. And it's like, where, who is that person? Almost like a protective mechanism. Yeah, definitely. And then the business one is just, it's so new. I've been doing this same thing for so long and it's safe, even though I'm unpredictable and kind of boring and out there I know is where I want to go, but it's like, do I really know how to swim? Mm -hmm. Right? Do I really? So that's where I'm at in that. Great. I just want to be here. Yeah. I think fear because you're trying something new when it comes to your business. And sometimes we try to separate business and personal life, but when it comes to what we're doing, we can't separate that. And almost business becomes this vessel for your own self growth and your own challenges of what you fear the most. And all those fears are absolutely valid. What are the fears saying when you're trying to, we can either go down the relationship route or the business route just to focus right now? I'm gonna say the business, cause I can see the bigger picture of the relationship. Mm -hmm. Right, and I feel like that's something I can kind of hash out in my own private time. The business is a little more elusive. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what is it? What is the fear saying? Mm -hmm. What fears come up when you try to do the league magnet? When you try to work on a book deadline? Is this is this really good enough? Like, is it really going to be able to help somebody? Mm -hmm. Right, because it's almost like I have all this. Right now, there's all this chaos in my life. It's like I'm having a hard time um, separating relationship, but if I'm not doing well relationally, or if there's lots of chaos relationship, like this is with the family and anything, not just uh, not just a romantic partner, but lots going on with my kids. And it's almost like I feel almost like maybe a selfish, like, like I'm ignoring them if I invest too much in this. Because, But at the same time, it's not, I know that that's not right, but it's like, who am I to write this book? And I have, I have like literally like three outlines just ready with to me just to fill them up and it's something stopping me. And it's almost like, maybe cause I'm not good enough. I'm feeling like I got too much, so much chaos and so much in this. Who am I to fill up this? Mm -hmm. Almost as if, if things are not perfect, then who am I to guide others? Yeah, but I logically know that doesn't make sense. Nobody's perfect and nobody's lives are perfect and I don't have all the answers. Yeah. So who are you to share these experiences? What have you gone through? A lot of dysfunction. <laughs> um, I guess I'm a I'm resilient and a fighter, mm -hmm. and I don't I don't just lay down. I I find a way. Like I went from. Like I'm trying to write, I have one of the outlines about confidence and one of them is about being single and celebrating or single or not settling and stuff like that. And they're all things that I've gone through and I've done well at. And if I look at the whole timeline, it's like, no, yeah, you have something to say, right? I used to be so insecure and shy. But then these moments hit you like I'm having my insecurities right now. And almost the fact that I'm having insecurity about it takes away my confidence to even write about confidence. Mm. Almost like, who are you to write about confidence? Though I know it's a message that I'm supposed to be talking about. <sighs> <laughs>
Can I now reflect? I feel like you're just babbling. No, no. Can I reflect what you just told me? Yes, absolutely. You know, you're resilient. You're a fighter. You don't just, you know, lay low. You find a way. But also because you're still going through insecurity and we all go for insecurity. I think that's the vulnerability and the authenticity that you bring into it. Anybody who claims that, you know, I did this inner work and I'm no longer insecure. I no longer feel like an imposter. I don't think I believe them. Right. Especially because it's almost like the lessons that you're sharing and you've learned, it's almost like second round. Let's embody this when you're doing something so scary. Yeah. I get it. I see how that Yeah, I do see. It. I know it sounds like the picture I saw was like a boxing ring. Mm -hmm. Right? And it doesn't I've I've been in this fight for. I've done the rounds. And now it's kind of getting to like, are you going to win or are you going to, and it's like, hmm, I don't know, but I like the vulnerable and the authentic because yeah, um, I still have moments where I want to hide, right? And it's like, well, why, why is that coming up when I feel so strong on some moments? And I feel like I can, I can, I'm, I can teach people, I can help people. And then there's moments where I just want to hide. And it's like there, I'm, I'm having this just dis, uh, disjointedness. And then that, who do you think you are comes in. Mm. Like, can you really help them if, if you're still wanting to have those tendencies to hide and protect? Yeah. yeah oh, I can resonate so much with that. Like yeah. sometimes we tap into that passion of us that, that force that knows we are here to serve, to guide. Yeah. Yeah. And when we're taking those steps, yeah. you just want to retreat. I just, I don't want to show up. I don't want to keep doing it. I keep doubting myself over that. And I think sometimes it's because our inner child hasn't fully calibrated to the level that we're ready for. Mm. It's almost like, I had a picture like, you know, you're going to marry this man, but yet you, okay, it's the wedding day when it almost feels like, well, I haven't bought the dress. I haven't bought the flowers. I don't have the bridesmaid. I don't have cake. Like, I'm not ready. I don't know if that's correct, but that's what came to my head. Yeah. That's such a great analogy. And all those things matter. It's not, you know, it seems like they don't matter, but they matter because those little pieces are still part of you. They might be parts of you that, experience some sort of hurt or got wounded in the process mm -hmm. especially when it comes to owning your voice yeah was there ever a time where you spoke up and things didn't work out or things backfired <laughs> um yes but at the same time i'm really grateful that i spoke up and i'm really grateful that they backfired mm. I know that doesn't make sense, but um, yeah, sometimes when you're not in healthy relationships, when you start to get healthy boundaries and you think that's going to make the relationship even better because you're getting healthier, it actually can dissolve the relationship. Mm -hmm. And then you're thinking that's a terrible thing, but it's actually the best thing that could have happened. That's mm -hmm. what I was coming from. Yeah, yeah. But at the moment, before you're able to look back and reflect at the moment, how does that feel? Um, foreign. Mm. You have to almost, like the person is changing to be able to make those boundaries. Like you can't be the same person. So like, it's almost like I, okay. I'm feeling something, but I don't know how to articulate it. Do you feel it anywhere in your body? Uh, yep, right all in here. Why in your chest? What does it feel like? Can you describe that feeling? 
Um, it's it's like um, mm, it's like a bursting. It's like a white gold, fiery bursting. That's right from here, and then from here, it's something else. <laughs> it's it uh, it's more subtle, more not as forceful, more almost like the after effect trickle of a firework. Mm. Let's try something. Let's sink into that feeling that you're feeling in both areas. Mm -hmm. So the first one where it feels like it's just shining, bursting mm -hmm. out. Feel all of that. Let it burst. It's joy and it's gratitude. Mm -hmm. And it's love and it wants to... Um, not be a taker, like doesn't, it wants to give. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it's so scary to show this part. What is the fear saying? What is the fear trying to tell you right now? I'm going to be disappointed. Why will you be disappointed? It's almost like it's more safe to keep it in dreamland because you have control over it. Mm -hmm. But once you put it out there, you lose control of it. Yeah. And what would you say to fear if it was, you know, someone sitting right in front of you? <laughs> Who are you to say? <laughs> And what right do you have to speak into my life? You're less than love. And this is love. What do you think fear is trying to do? Sabotage, keep me small. Mm. I think I am powerful. There's something inside me that does feel very powerful. I don't know why I have such attention. No, that's totally human, I think. What if we look at fear as almost like an older sibling who's trying right. to protect us from hurting? And it feels like they're sabotaging us. They're not letting us grow. They yeah. want us to keep playing small because yeah. they're terrified of us getting hurt again. Yeah. Can you see fear as trying to protect you? Definitely. But at the same time, it's trying to protect me. It's, it's hurting me. Yeah. It doesn't know. It doesn't know. And it's such fear is such a strong emotion that sometimes it's only got one purpose to keep you safe. And safe doesn't necessarily mean the best for you. You can right. be safe staying in a relationship that is not good for you because you feel like you're going to be supported. Yeah. So how can we you know, bringing fear back, how can we talk to them almost as a parent or an older sibling and thank them for, I know what you're trying to do, but, <laughs> but mm -hmm. this power, this joy wants to come. It's freedom. Mm. Like fear wants to put borders on and and almost harness you. 
but yet it takes away. Um, okay, funny. This is the image that came. Do you remember Saturday Night Live? Yeah. With a hypo, a hyper kid, and his mom put a harness on him and tethered him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but he can't actually play. Yeah. So he's at the playground tethered to keep him safe, but he can't play. <laughs> Exactly. Fear thinks it's protecting you, but it's keeping you from doing those things. Yeah. Can you talk to fear instead and tell them, what would you say instead? With I can almost have an appreciation. An, an, a, yeah, a compassion. I appreciate you. It almost, this is what, it sounds like words that my boyfriend's been saying to me. Like, <laughs> I appreciate you trying to protect me. Mm -hmm. Um. I think I know your heart is, well, fear doesn't have a heart, but um, I know you're trying to do what's best for me, but it's actually, it's not, um, it's taking away. Yeah. Can you ask fear to trust where you're going? <laughs> Can you trust where I'm going? So that's the thing, I like where I'm going. And I think it's a, it's almost like I need new fears. I know that's something weird, but if I'm, getting, if I'm gonna have something to be afraid about, it should be worth it. Yeah, yeah. I think you just, yeah. Maybe you can calm this fear where you don't, I've had experience where I lock my fears away and I thought, you know, taking care of it, keep pushing, but they always come back. And in a way they're always there in every move I make. Every time I try to take up space, it's still there because I never gave it a voice. And fear is normal. That's how humans evolve. How can you still have fear in, you know, your, your car, but not let it drive? Fear shouldn't yeah. be driving. Yeah. It still has a seat. You know, you're still here. Even in the trunk. Even in the trunk. <laughs> even in the trunk. Yeah, yeah. I can. Um, like what would I, so I missed the question, sorry. What can you tell this fear, you know? if we can give it an entity, maybe it's the fear of stepping into this new persona or this evolved persona. I really don't think, I don't wanna give it too much respect or too much of a voice because as much as it's maybe trying to protect me it's it's very juvenile it's very um like low low functioning mm -hmm. so to give in to it is keeping myself at a lower level even emotionally and mentally physically mm -hmm. even myself it's almost I don't know. I feel in my life, I don't want to give it too much because I feel like it is very dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. Almost as if it just wants to keep you back. Yeah, like it's almost very selfish and, and controlling and manipulating. Mm -hmm. It feels more like that. Cruel. Because the words it say are very cruel. Like cruel is who you think you are. What mm -hmm. right do you have? They're not like, oh, they're not words of, maybe you shouldn't do that because I want what's best for you. It doesn't speak like that. It speaks more malicious. Is it your fear? Mm. 
<laughs> That's a really good question. I don't think it is. I won't go into it, but I just had a person flash in my head. Yeah. Can you release that? And it's not going to happen just by, you know, thinking about it. But when this comes up again, knowing that it's not yours. Maybe breathe it out. Visualize it if that helps. But just knowing that that fear is not your voice, it's not yours, will help it have less power on you eventually. Yeah, this is good. That makes a really big difference. That almost you know mentally and emotionally where to place it now. So actually I was just doing, going over meditations about releasing this stuff, like just today. Yeah. This is good. And I'm seeing it, it was their fear. Hmm. Like it was their fear and because they're living a certain way and can't go past that, they put on me this idea of how I should live and not move past. And I accepted it. And they talk about, I was just listening to this thing, um, what you accept, you either have to justify or you have to, um, condemn yourself over mm -hmm. it never just stays there so if something is that's if you're accepting something that's not good for you you know those are the two things that you usually do and i can see i can see where i've done both <sighs> You're going to give me less to think about after. Oh, I'm so glad. I mean, this is such a huge moment to be able to identify if something is yours or not. I've never, ever, ever even thought of that. Ever in a million years. How, how do you feel now? With Lighter. Oh. Lighter. Like I have something to not blame them because I don't want to hold on and I don't want to... Because I don't think that will help. But to maybe be able to release, let, like know where to put it. That's their fear. Release it. Like, I think I have to do some, I like meditating and like visualizing and doing this mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. And now I get to actually visualize me making a picture of this and choosing something different. And when you start sharing that in your business, think of, all the people who will benefit from this. I never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because this is part of the confidence. And about celebrating life, which I, that is my heart. Hmm. So now I get to make a meditation that helps people release other people's fears that have been put on them. Yeah. When you feel ready. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you feel ready to do it. That could be because your heart wants to give. That's one of the things that came up as you were sharing. You are so ready to give. But perhaps yeah. that fear that wasn't even yours was like, no. And it wasn't, like you said, I think it's beautiful the fact that you recognize that it wasn't really trying to protect you. So now if 
you know, less of that will be showing up. What will that enable you to do? I think I might be more aware when other people, even though I love them so much, if I'm, if they're putting their fear on me to just be careful how much I'm taking it in as my fear mm -hmm. or feeling like I have to fix it. Maybe sometimes it just needs to be, and then we still move forward. I know I've had a thing of, if everyone's not on board around me, mm -hmm. um, I have guilt if I think, feel, or have a different opinion. I've, in the past, I've just kind of lost myself and morphed in, and then I lose me, and then I get resentful, and then I become empathetic, apathetic, and I shut down. And then who's that? That's not even me in the world anymore. And I'm more angry, bitter. I don't wanna live that way ever again. Are there any areas where you feel like you are responsible? Oh, yeah. Um, there's some areas relationally um, that some people not doing so well. And I do feel like it's my responsibility or it's almost because I feel like I'm not doing a good job on it. I'm having a hard time going forward with this. I don't know why the two are tied, but they are. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you're doing, if you're not doing so well, um, I feel like I'm maybe abandoning if I go and do really well and be happy. And it's, it's regard to my kids, mm -hmm. right? Does it feel selfish to choose what you really want to do or to pursue what you want to do i'm a little bit afraid i'll have a less emotional um, it's weird because at the same time i want to live and be an example for my kids because i know that's really really powerful um And they're not saying any of this to me. Like they're they're like, no, yeah, go mom. Like but just sometimes when the environment can be so fragile to keep adding change to it. Um there's one person I care about that you can they don't do as well. It always like the ground is always shifting underneath them and I can see that mm -hmm. and I've already had to sh every, there's already been so much shifting on them but at the same time I don't want to use it as an excuse so I don't know if I'm finding a reason to have an excuse like I don't know where my heart is on that one like if I maybe I'm looking for a reason it could be either. It could be because you notice and you're so compassionate and empathetic and you can see how any change could affect them that you're holding yourself back because of that. Unconsciously, it could be. Are you ready to create space for ease and alignment? I've created a free starter guide to help you go from frazzled to focus. It's a guide for the overwhelmed go-getter who's eager to find more ease, clarity, and alignment in our lives so you can quiet the noise and strengthen your connection within. After all, we can't align what we don't know is misaligned. 
simply grab your free copy at wholeandunleashed.com slash guide. I don't know. I, th- I think the imposter syndrome. Like if I was to, I have an outline for this whole book about confidence and it wouldn't be hard to write. And then to actually publish it, it's like, am I, do I really have the right to publish that book? Because yeah, life is so right now. Does it have to be the whole book? Can you start with smaller steps, like maybe certain concepts or ideas there that are not completely fleshed out? Can you share that in a smaller scale that you're comfortable and see how that feels so that you feel more Mm -hmm. comfortable as Mm -hmm. you, because writing a book, it's so vulnerable. It's such a huge, you know, step. I feel like, yeah. I feel like I've been doing that for so long, just kind of floofing over here, floofing over there, that, no, that's the right word, but uh, (laughs) that I'm not, it's almost like I need to commit to something though too. So I don't know if this is just the, you know that book about the resistance? Because I know, because I hash, like this is the thing to commit to. This is, this is where your heart needs to go now. that I'm getting this internal resistance because it is the right thing. Like the war on art or something like that. Mm -hmm. He talks a lot about resistance. I should maybe go read that book. Does it feel like you should go there because that's the logical next step or you can feel an energy just trying to pour out of you through that vessel? It feels like an energy. I feel like I'm so full right now in some stuff that I need to share it. But then There's another part of me going, but you don't have your crap together here. What gives you the right to share this? What if by sharing those other pieces start to align? Right. Maybe that's the word sharing, right? It's not so much I've got to make this and, you know, like maybe my approach is very like um, forceful. Like I'm kind of bullying myself almost a little bit and you're not good enough. I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you do. I, I totally see that and it's happened to me and sometimes it still happens when my passion, I. There's so much great information and resources out there that my voice gets lost in that. And from, oh, I want to guide, it becomes like, I have to guide. I have to make money. It has to be a business. Yes. So watching that voice and realizing, okay, if this is going to be a business, I get to align it in a way that works for me. I show up the way that feels most authentic. And that might not be showing up five times a day on Instagram mm-hmm. for me. For some people, they you know, they do great on it. But for mm-hmm. me and my energy and what feels right, it's not going in alignment with a lot of business recommendations. Right. And sometimes resistance shows up as that to show you that, hey, maybe the method is not the right one or maybe that method is adding so much pressure on you yeah I can say I am I am nervous of getting sucked into all that stuff because it doesn't feel like I want to share and I know that's a these are mediums that you need to use but I don't want to I don't want this life to get sucked into that life. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like you can see the ball is if it starts to roll, it might become a a ball you don't want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I kind of almost have this idea to go full out into business is not being there for my family as much as I want. So that's the belief that is stopping you. I think so. Let's write this down. What does it mean? If you could define going full out in your business, how would your hours look like? How would your life look like? Um, I have a little, it's a little bit more in the online world. Mm -hmm. And then there is a little bit of loneliness in that world to me. I like being with people so. Because hmm. my, my goal, I want, I am a writer. I know that. And I know I, I'm an author deep down. And I know it wouldn't take much to make that happen. And then I do want to be coaching like you are. And I do want to be um, creating courses and, and creating groups where women can come together and encourage each other. And, I, and, and value, for, people, for women to know their value, like their identity, their value, to have an increase in confidence, like those foundations are very important to me. And I've worked hard on those in my life to gain. But there is a little piece in because now I do massage therapy and I love that intimate um, contact with people. But at the same time, I'm getting really bored. So I, I'm kind of like, I have this world, I have my family, and I have this world. How do I make it all work? I don't know. Mm. I feel a little bit chaotic in my head. Like I don't, I haven't gone into the future enough to see how I can make this happen. To me, it's just overwhelming. Do they feel like completely separate worlds at the moment? Yeah. Yeah, it feels like three different worlds. And then plus a relationship with myself. I don't want to lose me to any of it. I fought so hard to find me mm -hmm. and to respect and to value her. Maybe that's a fear, to lose me again. What brings you the most joy? There's lots of things. Um, I'm gonna write them down. I love moving my body. Mm -hmm. uh, love connecting with people, you know, in a way that's in Encouraging, inspiring, valuing. Um, I, I love, like my favorite part of being a mom is I like to take and see the uniqueness of each kid and, and to really like um, almost breathe life into with encouragement, into like to see people's beauty and gifts and then like because it's, sometimes it's so hard to see because it's like eyelashes right they're so close you can't see it and like put it on a silver platter and be like this is how amazing and beautiful and valuable and precious and you are um especially if they're people who like I'm seeing women come out of relationships and going back into the dating this is why I want the single and celebrating mm -hmm. that kind of book is because I see so many people in relationships that just were so, they just gave themselves away and they don't know who they are. And then they're wanting to go back into the dating world and you just see how that's never gonna, like you gotta, 
You gotta love and value this beautiful woman before anybody else can, truly. That gets me excited, having those conversations. I love meditating. Like I love, love the gym, I love yoga, I love meditating, I love prayer, I love, um, I love the Bible, I really do. Um, I love sex <laughs> a lot. I love to help women have a, a better relationship um, with their sensuality and their sexuality and that 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 whole thing again. I'm that, that confidence, that value, their beauty, their worth. Do you have that time to nourish those aspects of yourself that you're trying to share with others? That's what I've been doing for the last couple of years. And that's, and, it, and I, sometimes it's like, I love my life so much. And then you have your moments where you like, like I had a really bad day yesterday or this morning. I did reality. Um, but it's almost like I'm doing so well and I'm so happy and I'm ready to take on life. And then these people that I love are still limping. And it's like, I can't leave them. They didn't get out, they didn't get away. They're still living in the mess, right? Mm -hmm. And I almost feel like I'm abandoning them. Is it true though? I don't. This thought came to my head. If I don't go forward, that discontent that's going to start happening in me is actually going to take away from them, not add to them. Where if I go forward, maybe it can inspire and breathe some life. Not even like, there's only so much I can do for them too, right? Mm -hmm. Especially if they don't see that they're not living their potential if they don't see it the way you do then oh they do yeah i see more in them than even they do mm. it almost irritates them how much i see in them <laughs> i find that when people have a hard time accepting their goodness and their beauty they get irritated at you when you see it because they're not ready to see that in themselves Deep down, I know it's time to go forward. Like for a long time, like I've known I was supposed to write a book about confidence since I was 16 years old when I was struggling and had no confidence. I was reading a book about this woman and when I put it, something inside my spirit was like, um, how this woman's helping you, you're going to help other women. And then I was like 25, I'm like, is it time? And it's like, no, it's not time. And then you're like 30, is it time? No, nah, it's not time. But now I, like, I feel like that's where I'm kind of like this inner, it's like, no, it's time. Yeah. It is time. It is time. Mm -hmm. And it's scary because suddenly you're no longer safe. It demands you to become the person that you know yes. of becoming. Yeah. And my dream is almost being that annoying person to me saying, no, nah, you are this, you are that. It's like, no, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's a good way to look at it. Sorry about all the noise. It's okay. I think your dog is totally vibing with the conversation. Is it your dog? <laughs> yeah. The lawnmower guy came. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think that's what's happening. Because I can't stay the same. And I don't, I like change. I really, really do. But it's like, do I have what it takes? You know, when you have that knowing 
but then to have the knowing. Mm -hmm. That's that's what's going on here. Do you feel like there's a disconnect between the person you can see and the person you are right now? Uh, yeah. Yeah. What if you're already that person? You are. Every cell of your body already is. It's just your mind that's not sure if it's in that vessel yet. That makes sense. And this is where meditation again can be really powerful. To allow myself to go in and feel that her and allow myself to actually feel it as my reality. Yeah, because you are, you, you are her. Like that energy bursting out of you because you're already her and you're ready. But it takes time for, you know, our physical bodies or even our brains to, to kind of really accept that, oh, maybe I am healed. It's almost like I have to persuade my own heart. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. How would you start showing up now that you're her? You've written the book. Let's envision that you've already written your books. Mm -hmm. How would your days start like? It's your routine, ritual. What Almost would you exactly be focused on? Ah, <laughs> that's good. my work my work would look different in what ways mm. i wouldn't be moving as much i would be in front of the computer more And that part does not bring me joy. I was gonna but, ask you that. I was just, I'm like, do you have to though? Some of it. I actually, I've actually went through a writing thingy and this has how he, cause I'm very kinetic and so is he. And he's like, he's like, I voice memo my chapters and then I send it to get trans, like copied out. And then it goes to an editor. And I'm like, okay, I can write my books like going for a walk. That'd be cool. Sometimes there's also the pressure to do it all. Yes. Because I got to make money. Of course, yeah. But and if I do it and it does no one wants it, I'm not making money. And I wasted all my time, I wasted all my energy, I'm a failure. I'm really not all this bright, beautiful goodness. Right, right. What if, what if people are receiving it and you get to have a team, you get to delegate? What part of your work will bring you the most joy? Mm. I I like this kind of stuff, the conversations. And I do see like creating e-courses and group coaching and that that encouragement. I really like the idea of um and the meditation and, 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 and getting that. I have the idea of using yoga and we both know Strala. Strala is very, teaches people how to accept themselves at a very physical place to start maybe having a foundation where maybe you can accept yourself with this emotion or maybe you can accept yourself with this thought. 
And then when that thought or emotion or belief comes up, how could we, just like how you had me find it in my body, right? How can we, like my body has to be very much a part of this. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm just thinking I have to be in front of a computer all the time and that's gonna kill my soul. Which was the belief that was holding on to, if I'm successful, that's what's going to happen and take time away from your family. So of course your body and mind is like, I'm not freaking doing that. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I love <laughs> moving. <laughs> like right now my work's not even work at all. It's like, it's the most natural, easiest thing in the world to do. I just know it's time for more. It's something, it's time for change. Yeah. But I can take maybe what I learned from that and bring it into this. It That's sounds, question. yeah, it sounds cheesy, but you get to create your days. And again, I get lost. It's so easy to get lost in that business talk of like showing up and working those hours. And I'm lucky because I'm only, you know, taking care of myself right now. I don't have kids or any more responsibility. But when mm -hmm. I notice myself putting that pressure where I'm not inspired, I'm grumpy, I haven't moved my body, basically not living what I'm preaching. That's yeah. when I'm like, oh, okay, something is not right. And it's been so much deconditioning from the voices, the fears of people saying like, if you don't mm -hmm. show up this way, you won't be successful. Yes. That is not true. It's not true because the times that I've gotten an opportunity and all that, it wasn't because I was miserable. It was because I was doing something I enjoyed. I share from the heart. And that energy, like people resonate with energy as much as they don't see it consciously. Every post, every intention you set is an energy. Mm -hmm. And allowing yourself to say, hey, maybe I work on my business two to three hours a day. I can still be successful. And there might be some fear because that's opposite to everything we've been taught. But it's possible when you start to shape your life like this every little day. It's not going to, you won't figure everything out from one day to the other. It's also that pressure that makes us freeze <laughs> when we're stressed yeah. out. But what can I do today to make my day with more ease? like infusing those strala, you know, from the body to our lives, basically, it works. That's good. Yeah, I do think that's a, a fear, actually. Losing the things that I actually truly love to do, to do something that I love and want, but through a means that I don't love and want. Yeah. And then just share. There's something about that word that just got me. I think that takes pressure off. Yeah. I'm not trying to be like the confident expert and maybe just sharing something that's helped me. And if it benefits you, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's just those tiny shifts from within that helps us show us differently. It's not because you learn a different business plan. It's not all those can become noise when we don't mm -hmm. understand what's being tugged inwards. I do see how life 
like the whole not yet, not yet, not yet now, I do see how things that don't seem to be related are going to be tools that will actually help with yeah. now um, helping it have an energy. Like you talked about energy. Those things you can actually bring energy into this, not be blocking it. Mm -hmm. How do I use that? Yeah, that's a good question. The reason why I like the goals and dreams, because uh, I keep, um, I mean, confidence is that I keep reading um, business books mm -hmm. and they always say just confidence, and term, determination, confidence and determination, confidence and determination. And there's two different kinds of confidence. There's fake confidence and there's that authentic, real from the heart. But how do you get that? So all these books, it's like, okay, that's great. And the first chapter tells you to be confident. But how do we get that? So maybe I just give you my own testimony. Yes. Definitely, because confidence keeps coming up, right? But what is authentic confidence? Not the one that you see cater in a highlight reel on social media, no, but the everyday confidence that you're really diving into and embodying. Confidence doesn't mean lack of fear. It doesn't mean you become a robot and you're always ready for everything. Maybe it's about redefining confidence. Ooh. And I love the word redefine. Yeah. First word that came into my head was peace. That's good. Yeah, if you were to move forward yeah. and filter your days through a few core values, Ooh. what would they be? Two core values. Mm. not so, so much of success is damaging to the body if you look around in our world um like feeling really satisfied and good in my body is a big one mm -hmm. um Confidence and peace could also be if it keeps coming up, if you feel strongly about them. Mm -hmm. Even feeling right in my skin, which kind of comes with that moving, that satisfied the health. Like, I feel like you have to feel right in your, it's so important to feel right in our skin mm -hmm. for there to then eventually have this peace that leads to a confidence, which leads to this overflowing of joy because just who you are is, is as you should be. Mm -hmm. um, relationships are really important to me like when I'm when I'm not being the kind loving person that I know I am mm -hmm. that really me. like it hurts me as much as them um, would that be seen as connection connection fashion respect mm -hmm. but yet um healthy boundaries mm. we can really mess with people because <laughs> putting up healthy boundaries can feel so wrong especially if they're not used to you having them <laughs> yeah exactly or even yeah or even to be yeah a person who 
because it feels wrong sometimes to put up healthy boundaries. And I'm almost not doing that. I'm not putting up healthy boundaries with my goals and dreams. Mm. Maybe because I've never done it before. Yeah. We're told our goals and dreams are not important. I have to almost relearn, I have to learn how to do that. Which is in the end, just self-respect, same as a regular boundary. Like it's almost like business and relationships are very closely connected, at least for me they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when you start having clients, would they yeah. demand too much of you? That was one of my core fears. I don't want to as a people pleaser or recovering people pleaser, yeah. I was terrified of not being able to set proper boundaries. And it's something mm -hmm. that you just learn. For me, I learn when I'm doing it, not when I'm in my head, in my head, frozen, not doing anything, not taking action. <laughs> That's not when I learn. Yeah. So I'm basically, I feel like I've been leading up to this and now it's just to make the steps. Like to, it's more about honoring. It's almost like I've learned all of this stuff. Now I think the key is to put up healthy boundaries around my goals and dreams and to treat them. Like almost maybe I need to look at them separate from myself. I don't know if that makes sense. Like how you would want to make sure that you spent time with your child because you love them and you'd want to invest in that child because you love them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If that helps, you can look at it a similar way. Because it has value. Not so much that it's a child, because that sounds weird, but <laughs> because it has value. Yeah. It has value and it's also, it's an energy that's coming out of you. How can you honor it in its purest form? Ooh, I like that. To express. It's funny because I, this thing, live your love, life of vibrant expression. That's something that came to me about six years ago. And I'm like, maybe that's just what I need to start implementing for myself in this particular thing. Yeah, it could be a mantra. It could be so many. Sometimes I think we get so lost because there's so much noise. I have put like post-it about like little things to remind myself, this is what I, why I'm doing what I'm doing. Ooh. to ground myself. Yeah, like a good article, good writing is what, why, how, and proof. Yeah. Okay, description. Maybe I just do that almost like sometimes yeah you need to get it out of you and look at back to have a clearer let's have it yeah <sighs> And you can dive into the core values. The reason I brought it up is that I have a few core values that I try to use that as a filter for my days. So extend okay. is one of my words. And if I have something in my task that does not feel particularly expensive, that is actually a sign of, oh, if I have to do it like taxes, then okay, I'll put on some music. I'll make the best out of it. If, it, if it's 
something I don't feel comfortable doing, then I know that maybe that's not in alignment to myself. So you can use your core values in that way. Whenever you're doing something, does it, does it tap into healthy boundaries? Does it tap into kindness? That could help because sometimes our logical minds and our fears might be so loud that we forget the essence of that. I like that. I'll work, I'll work on that. <laughs> And I've made that with my other job or career. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if they very much shift over. And I just haven't really thought about it that way because I had to go through a lot of process because um, sometimes people pleasers will hurt themselves to help others. Mm -hmm. And I was doing that. And that's something that I've really worked on in the last um, probably year and a half. And Strala has been a huge part of me learning to um, not only not hurt myself, but actually use opportunities that I would have hurt myself to actually bring healing. Oh. And I've been working on that in the last year and a half. So it's probably something that will be beneficial here. Yeah, that's so powerful. And now it's time to leave it. That's what I feel. Okay, I learned that. Time to go do something else. Yeah, it could, you know, again, recognizing those energies. And I think sometimes it's, it's great to have goals and dreams and have, you know, metrics to measure them. Mm. But if they are closing you off instead of helping you mm. grow, like I was starting to work on a program and halfway through, I was like, I don't want to do it. I feel like I was being called there was an energy for something that wasn't as big as a program, but maybe like a smaller course. Ah. And I ignored it. And I still launched a program and a few people were interested, but I'm like, oh, something's not right. And then once yeah. I let my energy go to what it wanted to do, I'm like, oh, that makes so much more sense. And I'm getting validations from so many other conversations and places. So just know where your energy wants to go, have goals, have metrics, but don't be closed by them. Allow so how would you how would you describe your energy? So that didn't feel right. But what what energy came up when it did feel right? So it's interesting because opening that program was what I needed to come up with that smaller course. That's, that's so the I journey. had to do the big thing. Yeah, I had yeah. to. And then once I did that, I realized, oh, I'm saying so much here. It's my inner work that I've done in the last five years and I'm bombing people with it for lack of a better word that yeah. the little one that started as a webinar and now it's going to become a smaller course that felt so much more digestible and I realized I can go into depth even more. And mm -hmm. so it was one of the awareness as I was going through sharing it and then realizing, huh, maybe there's something there. And it wasn't until I got people in the room testing it out that I, I got that feedback because my mind was like, yeah, you should do that. And I got the outline for the course. I got all of it. But then the energy told me, hey, this is it's better this way. The course, you can maybe do it five years from now. It's not wasted. Yeah. But it, it was more sustainable to follow when the energy arises and understand it. Wait, wait, wait. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> It does. I see it. I was looking for words like, does peace come up? Does joy come up? Does, um, like, how do you know when it feels right? Mm. Or is it just a knowing that you can't put a description to? It's a knowing. It's a knowing because I've done it or I've seen it in my life a few times. Mm, okay that inner knowing. And I think the more I lean into it and trust it, the louder, the easier it is to detect it. And that was doing the inner work of, oh, is my mind screaming out of the fears and shoulds? Or it's actually that energy that wants to be poured out. Right. No, this is good. This is really good. I think this is what I needed to hear. 
I'm glad. How are you feeling? I feel like I have a lot of notes to go over and dive into a little bit deeper. Like I don't, I feel like this is just scratched the surface and now I have to do some yeah. contemplating, asking questions, listening to my knowing. Yeah. And I'll send you the recording of this so you can listen to it. Okay. Whenever. Yeah, oh, thank yeah. You. I thought it would be nice to have because sometimes in the moment when I listen to something again, I take in something else. Yeah, so you can listen to yourself and hear like, oh, I do do that when I'm um, need to get stuff out. I put in a voice memo, yeah, and then I'll play it back to myself. And it's crazy how much you learn. I know it seems kind of weird, but no, not at all. It really does benefit me. So that's one of the ways you process. Oh, definitely, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like even Lean yesterday. Into that. For me? Lean into that if that that's helpful for you. Well, I, yeah, yesterday I had this feeling of frustration and then I just voice memoed it and then I processed it and just got it out and then I listened back and I was like, oh, I just learned something about myself. And I'm like, huh. That was, it was really... It was as if I was like, I like almost being able to step back because I can get quite emotional yeah. and be able to put it out, step back and almost look at it like from a distance. It gives yeah. you a lot of clarity. And it's kind of like you holding space for yourself. Oh, I like that. I never thought of that. I guess so. Hey, <laughs> yeah. I just look like I'm always on the phone. <laughs> See, we get to redefine it. Our phone can be so useful. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's eight hours, but if we're using it for connection, FaceTime, and like writing things, it's it doesn't true. matter. It's not bad. Very true. As long as I can move. <laughs> yes, yes, that's a priority. Like, can you write a book on a phone? I'm kind of thinking that's what I got to learn. Like I try, I downloaded Scrivener, and it's like, I'm going to be chapters, and I'm going to be organized, and I'm like, I don't want to be here. Felt itchy. Oh, interesting. Yeah. See, maybe it's just recording, having someone tra transcribe it. Like the yeah. way that things are done can be reinvented or, you know, you can adapt it to you. Yeah. I think this is the lesson I need to learn where, how to feel, have your goal and dream and get rid of the ideas of how it has to be done and see how me being authentically me can still get the outcomes. And that's real true. If I'm trying to teach people confidence, being confident enough to do that, that's a testimony in itself, I guess. Yeah, that's almost like another step when they're through the book. How do you embody everything that you learn? Yeah. But you said a thing, it's trusting, trusting yourself. I haven't been trusting myself and that's why I'm feeling stuck. Mm -hmm. And you remember how you were talking about how, how you had this big thing and then you went small but deeper and then you just trusted your, your inner knowing. Yeah, it's always there with you, even when the other voices are loud. It makes you doubt it, but the inner knowing knows. There's no logic to it. We try to apply it and that usually does not work. Other than it feels like. Yeah. Maybe that's a core value, trusting. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we can have different knowings at the same time, right? But what one is, what one's yeah. actually deeper? Yeah, yeah, that's so true. What are some ways you can cultivate that inner trust moving forward? Mm, baby steps. Yeah. Um, there was this, I did the writing training and she was talking because I hated social media. Like I, have, I just got on social media like last November 
and I didn't really want to be on it, but it's like, no, like to be a writer, you have to start like, um, like publishing companies don't even look at you unless you've already done all the work. And I don't even know if I'll, I'll probably self-publish, but who knows? But um, the to get started, she was like, chase the fun. Like mm. what feels fun for you? Like what would be the most enjoyment to go do? And I started doing that and my writing wasn't like that good. I had no idea what I was doing, but I was just kind of chasing the fun and not putting pressure on myself. And that actually did get me moving in the right direction. I'm still not where I want to be, but that definitely was a key in getting me moving. So yeah. everybody just needs to keep applying that, chasing that fun. That doesn't feel responsible. That's the claim. Again, redefine it. What is responsible? I've honestly, I've had to break down everything that was told to me about shoulds and hows. And once I realized that about how I wanted to show up, mm. and how certain ways weren't allowing me to show up or it was putting pressure, just like, you know, a common theme is sharing on social media. I know a lot of people have this love hate relationship and I've had it so many times. It wasn't until I looked into the intention of why I wanted to do what I was doing and also reframe it from, oh, because I'm a business to sharing. Sharing for me was also this huge word and it took off the pressure. I, I didn't like calling myself an expert or anything, but it's just like, I have that energy. It's called wisdom. I was afraid of that wisdom. I thought it wasn't good enough. Yes. But I just started sharing and the more I did it, the more authentic connections I got. It wasn't about likes. It wasn't about, you know, repose whatever the metrics are and I've never even to this day maybe you know compared to other people I'm not a super successful business but I feel like I get my point across and I get the connection that I need you feel satisfied and fulfilled yeah that's success right and it's the most uncertain because I'm pivoting some things I'm trying different things out but I am the most at peace because I trust I trust that where I'm going is where I'm supposed to be. And I trust that even though if I don't know, I'll figure it out because we always figure things out, but we put all that pressure to figure it all out, get your six month plan, your three month plan. And then you realize I hate all of that. I just want to show up and learn and get better. And then in the future, I can hire someone to help me manage if they enjoy mm -hmm. that. Right. Cause that's just not yeah. my, my zone of genius. I just want to show up. I get you. Yeah. Just show up. <laughs> and giving our giving ourselves like show up, but then giving yourself like this has been a word that I'm allowed to take up the space. Mm -hmm. And I don't. Because sometimes we almost feel like, oh, there's already so many people, or what do I have to say? And to give yourself permission, I think that's what I'm struggling with, to give myself permission to take up spa the space. Yeah. Let that joy flow. Just let it flow. And these things are practice. It starts with sharing one thing and maybe dropping your guard and suddenly it's not as daunting because if I look at my first post ever like when I opened Instagram years ago I never showed my face it was all pretty pictures of like landscape and all that my face nobody knew who I was and I was happy but I felt that energy that just wanted to keep externalizing what I've learned I'm like god damn it I want to keep playing safe like why am I throwing a wrench into my life yeah. But ultimately, in honoring that energy and trusting that the energy is here for a reason, instead of doubting it, was the most freeing. Mm -hmm. I can see that. And did you start just with like little baby steps or did you yeah. get all? No, baby steps. Like for me, it's baby steps. I think for other people, it works to go all the way. For me, I think I like to kind of put my feelers on test something and kind of see it and not overthink it. I 
because I can mm. spiral so easily and to prevent my boundary for preventing that from happening if I share something it's like share it don't check for a couple of hours because I know that I'm like obviously seeking validation and I'm like this is not the energy I need I'm sharing from a place of just putting out there no expectation and then it becomes easier that energy of like oh am I doing it right it's mm -hmm. like not as loud when you do put out my very first yoga video remember I contacted you and be like oh yeah were you it was so nice for me it was nice my daughter was like you look like a cam girl and I was like what and I was like it was so hard for me to put that up oh and then it's like I did it that bad <laughs> really like a cam girl yeah oh <laughs> so that must have been daunting it hurt a little oh. sorry I'll be one second yeah Oh, I Sorry. Okay. It's life. He's my senior dog who uh, he has kind of a bum leg, so he needs like um, encouragement to go up the stairs. You have to be like, you got it, buddy. Good job. Oh, that's so he's, cute. It is so cute. I think we all could use a little bit of extra encouragement. <laughs> I think so. And his, his energy changes when he has that. When he has that person, you're like, you got it, buddy. He's like, okay, I can do it. Yes, because then you start believing that you can. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, lessons from Dexter. <laughs> oh, how are you feeling right now? Really good. Like, really, like, I want to sink into this and, and make this my own. Yes. That's what I feel. I feel like there's some gold in here and I need to not just um, talk about it, but, like, persuade my heart, like I kind of said before. Yeah, you're already there. You're already there. I've definitely been building up to this moment. There's no doubt. And I'm probably just, I think every, it's kind of like that journey, all those little baby steps, all that learning. It's all for a reason. I just got to trust it. Yeah. I want to share a few quotes that you said, and I was like, that's so incredibly moving and wise. You said, who you are is who you're meant to be. Maybe sometimes it just needs to be. I'm ready to give. To express. Just reflecting back at you. Mm. I do believe who you are is who you're meant to be. And I would love, I would love more women to know that. I think that's my heart. And that was so much more beautiful and powerful and valuable than we realized. Amen. Our culture does want to change us to be something we're not. Constantly. So that's how advertising it makes its money, right? But I do, I do see a change of more people seeing that for what it is. Mm -hmm. 
a painful change. <laughs> I'm so excited for like the younger generation talking to my kids and stuff. There's such a wisdom and a beauty in them. There really is. Oh, any final words? Anything you want to share? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Whole and Unleashed podcast. Phew, this was quite a while, right? No? We went super deep, and if you've noticed, things are rarely as they seem. They're not as direct or simple. There is so much more under the surface. And this is what happens in an expansion session. The intention, well, is to expand, but also look at what's underneath. What's stopping you from reaching your dreams? Why are you feeling resistance, fears, and how to get clarity around them? If you're interested in a free expansion session and you're open to sharing on the podcast or know someone who might benefit from this, I'll invite you to apply at tollandunleashed.com. Go to the podcast page and apply right there. It's a 90 minute session and we'll dive super deep and hold space for whatever's coming up. And if you found value in this episode, please share and or leave a review on iTunes since this will help more people find it.